three different messages, you're like, well, I guess I got to say something, I don't know. Um, because if you're also familiar with um, being a church member, you know that fall tends to be stewardship season. Now, it isn't. It's St. Anne, so calm down. Take a deep breath. I'm offering you no mugs. But um, we do have lovely mugs. But we give them for free if you um, come visit us. And we also give you coffee. Now, it's not a pound of roastery, but we give you coffee. You can be part of the St. Anne's family just by being here. It's crazy how that works. Um, and then you have the gospel reading for this week. And I was like, okay, we probably need to talk about these things, right? But wow, it's hard, isn't it? And I have been in ministry long enough, I've been doing this long enough, that when something is really, really hard and you don't want to talk about it, you really should. Um, because when stuff gets difficult, that's God kicking us saying, it's time. It's time. It's time to wrestle with it. And um, I know I've said this to you guys before, but my theory on Scripture is you wrestle with Scripture until you get a blessing. So we're going to wrestle today because money is hard and it's weird. Okay, the kids are all in Sunday school. Okay, money in the church is the dirty mistress. Like, we don't want to talk about it, but we all know it's there, right? Like, it feels kind of icky. And I'm not kidding. One of the reasons that we don't do a stewardship drive, as the vestry members, one of the reasons that we don't do it is because, I'll be perfectly honest, I don't like it. And two, every time we do it, someone quits. <laughs> it's like literally the opposite of what I'm trying to do. They're like, we're talking about money. Peace. And I'm like, never mind. We won't talk about it. It's okay. And let's be honest, I don't like talking about it because um, if you've met me for five minutes, you know that money is not my thing. I'm married my IT, and the credit card guy. Like, money in my house works like this. Um, I scan the credit card, because we use a credit card for budgeting purposes. I scan it, it works, I move on with my life. I am such a bad money person. I'm not even exaggerating with you. I have something called a Bluebird card. Nobody knows what a Bluebird card is, do you? Because you're all adults. <laughs> now, a Bluebird card is a car that comes out from American Express. And it's a way that you teach teenagers how to deal with money. So they feel like they have a credit card, but you put money on it. I use a Bluebird card for my coffee purchases because I can't manage money, y'all. And I know I can't manage money. So I have a Bluebird card, which you don't know what that is because you're not 15. Okay, so money, not my thing. Can we all agree? Meg, money's not your thing, right? Ask the best friend, they're like, Meg, money, not your thing. All right, so when I come across passages like this, it makes me feel squirmy. I don't like it. And I'll be honest, I'm not sure always what God is trying to say in this. It's confusing. It's like there are mixed messages about it anyway. Like, is the shrewd person good? Like, is shrewd a good thing? Or is shrewd a bad thing? Is shrewd cheating? And if that's true, then ew. Like, that's clearly not the message. So let's dive a little bit more into the history at the time. Okay, so the history at the time, which is, frankly, you're going to see some parallels to our time. So pay attention, y'all. Okay, so... Uh, the really, really high of wealthy people um, who want to be landowners and they have all the stuff, right? One of the ways that they continue to accrue that wealth is by charging super high interest to the people who work for them. I mean, that's just that time. We don't do that anymore. We're better now. Okay. So... Um, how it works is um, if you want to grow your plants and you're going to be a farmer, because remember this is a farming time period, um, you're going to have to pay a certain amount of tax to those people for you being able to do that there. Now, take a quick look at the numbers that are in here. Do you see these numbers that are listed? So it would usually be a tax rate of about 50%. 
about 50%. Um, and then you have a middleman. Sound familiar? You have a middleman. Because you don't want to get dirty by asking for money and like going and beating up the kneecaps of these people who owe you money, right? Because, ew. So you hire a guy, you hire a manager, you hire a middleman, you hire a debt collector, if you will. And that debt collector, how they make money is they charge a little bit more. So they're going to pad how much those people owe the head person with a certain amount for themselves, too. So can you see how this creates crippling, crippling debt to people who already are scraping by? We're looking at you, loan sharks, right? Okay, so what the shrewd manager probably does in this situation, because he gets caught and he's not bringing in, the, he's not being a very good middleman. He's not bringing in the money that he's supposed to be bringing in. So what we think he probably, probably does is he doesn't cancel the debt. He probably takes out his chunk in order to at least keep his job as middleman, right? So he's not necessarily doing any favors, but he is cutting out um, his chunk to try and keep his job. So in the Bible, there's a reason that usury is a sin. And usury is um, charging interest on something. So somebody might borrow something from you, you charge interest. You got a mortgage, right? You're paying a lot of interest on it. Okay. So in, in early Christian time periods, this is considered a sin. Usury is a sin. And this is why. Because this is how it's used. It's used as a way of um, crippling people already crippled by poverty. Again, you know, this is just that time. You know, we don't do that now. That would be wrong. Right? What? No, crazy. Okay, so part of this conversation um, that's going on here is around um, this practice and the sinfulness of this practice. And what really happens over time is that you and I get more and more uncomfortable talking about money because we don't necessarily know where all this is coming from. That This is really a justice issue that Jesus is talking about. So what do we, what do, we do with all of this? And I'm not going to offer you answers today because I don't know. I don't know. Because the church historically has used the membership drive um, as our way of making things work, right? Um, you join your country club, you join the Elks, you join the Rotary, you join NPR, you join your church, right? You get a mug. And all of this has really come to a place where we don't know how to talk about it anymore. What are things that you're not allowed to talk about with people? Politics, money, religion. I'm out of things to talk about. <laughs> it's going to be like literally short of summer. But why? Why are we so uncomfortable talking about those things? Why are we so uncomfortable? Here's my theory. I told you I don't have the answers, but I do have theories. My theory is justice. Because when we talk about those things, they make us squirm. They make us ask questions that we don't want to look at. And I think it's important that when we squirm, we look harder. Why can't we talk about politics? Because it makes us squirm, right? Because we're not sure what to do with that. Why can we talk, not talk about money? Because it makes us squirm. Because I've got to admit to you all that I have a bluebird card. That's ridiculous, y'all. Why can we not talk about religion? Because it makes us squirm. What if we're wrong? What if? There's so many what ifs in this passage. And I don't have answers. I don't. But I think in the very places when we don't have answers, when we squirm the most, is when we need to look the hardest. If this conversation makes you squirm, and I really hope it does, I hope when you are talking with your family members about money, it probably should make you squirm. When you discuss budgeting, it should make you squirm. When you discuss politics and justice and what's happening in our world, it should make you squirm. When we talk about religion, 
like really truly dive into our religion and our faith, it should make us squirm because we're not sure that we're right. We're not sure that we're doing it correctly. Because all of this references, all this greed and all this taking money um, and just and all this stuff comes back to the god Mammon. Now, in our translation today, that doesn't come up. But Mammon is um, the biggest god at the time, right? And Mammon is indeed our god many of the times. Because Mammon is the god of money, property, ownership, stuff. And this passage should make us ask a question. Why? Why do we do the things that we do? In churches, why do we do the things that we do? We do membership drives because that allows us to do ministry? Or do we do membership drives so I can drive a Lexus? I don't drive a Lexus. I drive a Prius. I love my Prius, though, so don't you dare try and take my roach away. Um, but why? Why do we do the things we do? Because there's nothing wrong with money, y'all. There is nothing wrong with property. There is nothing wrong with money. It might be our dirty mistress, but Lord help us, it lets us run a church. It might be something that you're uncomfortable talking about in your marriage, but guess what? It's what lets your marriage happen. Because you have a home, and you have a job, and you have a car, and you can hopefully help your kids do the things that they need to do, right? So that is not evil. Let me say this again. Money is not evil. It's a tool. It is a tool. Living for money is evil. Harming other humans for money is evil. When we use humans as tools to get to money, that is evil. So the question we have to ask today is this. Is money our tool or are humans our tool to get to money? Who is our God? Is our God wealth, comfort, prosperity? Because that's mammon. Is money, prosperity, property, all those things a way of living out the gospel? Allowing us to live out the gospel? Don't feel bad about wealth. Don't feel bad about your whiteness. Do not feel bad about your gender. Do not feel bad about those things. Use them. Use them. They are tools that allow us to bring about change and justice to the rest of the world. If we huddle in our corners and deny, no, 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 I'm not rich. No, 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 I, I don't have white power. No, 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 uh, because I'm size gender and straight, I don't have power. I have a hard life, man. I got MS. I gotta live in the suburbs. Suburbs are rough, man. For people like me, suburbs are rough. No, I don't get to do that. What do I get to do? I get to say, you know what? I have these things. I can feel bad about them. Or I can use them to try and make the world a better place. Those things are tools. Humans are not tools to get to those things. And that is what we have to wrestle with today. Are we following God? Are we following mammon? And what does that look like? How do we know which is which? And I told you I don't have answers. I don't. Because this is something I struggle with every single day. Why do I do the things that I do? Why do I make the choices that I make? Sometimes I don't know. But at the end of the day, y'all, I probably shouldn't be preaching the sermon because I have a bluebird card. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you.